Now is an exciting time to be alive. Progress is on the horizon for many. Exponential technology and the acceleration of breakthrough science provides hope and an opportunity for all life on this planet to benefit. But for that to be possible, we need to ensure that specific guidelines and principles are written into the development of new technology from the outset, so that each technology meets the criteria to do good, not harm. Technologies cannot simply be understood as neutral tools or instruments. They embody the values of their creators and may unconsciously reinforce systematic patterns of inequality, discrimination and oppression. We need technologies that solve 21st century challenges to move the human story forward for everyone, improving all life of this planet. A development framework is necessary to do so. And that framework is specific design principles which are tailored for the development of each of these exponential technologies. Welcome to this Idea Me Soundbites mini-series. My name is Stephen Umbrello. I'm the Managing Director at the Institute for Ethics and Emerging Technologies. I'm a researcher at the University of Turin and author of the forthcoming book, Technology Ethics, Responsible Innovation and Design Strategies. In this mini-series, I want to take a look at how do we address some of the large issues coming from emerging and transformative technologies. And I want to start off in this episode in particular by the ways we actually talk about technologies, the narratives we use, the stories we tell. I'm going to be discussing briefly four main ways that we tend to discuss technologies, the four main stories we tend to tell. That's instrumentalism, technological determinism, social constructivism, sometimes called social determinism, and interactionalism. Instrumentalism is pretty much what it sounds like. We talk about technologies as mere instruments. They're value neutral. They don't incarnate any values. A technology can be used for multiple ends, and many of the times those ends are unforeseen by the people who design them. We tend to see these narratives used by both governments as well as academics and in popular media and cinema. The NRA, the National Rifle Association, the United States, uses this narrative pretty well when they say guns don't kill people, people kill people. You can see there's a value neutrality in there. And to a large degree, it's true. A gun obviously does not pick itself off the table and shoot someone. It's a person that needs to be there in order to arrive at that end. But a gun facilitates that end far better than, say, a spoon does. Just like a spoon facilitates the end of eating soup far better than a gun does. The design, the architecture of the system itself permits or facilitates certain ends better than alternatives. So there's a weakness in instrumentalism, although there's a certain degree of truth. Technological determinism is another very popular narrative, particularly in cinema. We see it all the time in films where technology becomes autonomous and directly determines our behaviors. This is also a narrative that's usually adopted by the big power brokers like Google, Microsoft, and Meta because it's very convenient to say that it's a technology that did something bad rather than uh, the fault of the humans who designed that technology. In Lynn White's book, Medieval Technology and Social Change, he attributes the creation of the stirrup to the creation of the European feudal system, which dominated Europe for centuries. He said that the stirrup allowed mounted knights, a new form of combat, to take place and therefore increase the dominion of those knights across peasant Europe, allowing for the feudal system to be born. This, of course, is controversial and actually is called the Great Stirrup Controversy because we're not 100% sure and it's doubtful whether a single technology like the stirrup could have caused such a dramatic change. Then there's social constructivism, sometimes called social determinism, which has the opposite story. It's humans who completely determine the technology, not the other way around. It's a hopeful narrative because it means that we have control over the kinds of creations that we design. But it discounts many of the impacts that technology has on our behavior. And we know that technology has an influence on behavior. In many cases, it's actually designed that way. 
the nudging that certain notifications have on our phone to our psychology influences the way we interact with our technology. Each of these narratives, these three narratives, have a certain degree of truth, but also a certain degree of weakness. If we take these three together, we come to, I think, a more comprehensive understanding or story of talking about technology, and that's interactionalism. That is, technologies in society co-construct, they interact directly with one another, they determine one another in a iterative loop. In, the in 1980, Langdon Winner, in his famous article, Do Artifacts Have Politics, essentially gave birth to this interactional narrative saying that Robert Moses, the architect in, uh, in New York, created a series of low-hanging overpasses around Long Island that didn't permit a certain height of vehicle to pass under them, mostly buses. The poor in New York, who relied on buses in the early 20th century, simply could not pass under them. And why? Well, Winner says that uh, that Robert Moses was racist and he incarnated his racist values into the bridge, a low technology, to not permit a certain class of people from accessing his famous beaches, which he used the over low hanging over overpasses to block the access to. Now, of course, another technology became more accessible, that's cars over time, allowing that once excluded group to pass under them. So we can see how technology and society interact with one another over time. Now, whether it's actually true that Moses did that intentionally is still under debate. But what it does betray is that technologies and society are not clearly distinct. They're inextricable from one another and therefore determine one another. This has given birth to a series of design approaches that take that as their starting point. If technology and society co-construct one another, we have to take extra care in how we design those technologies, knowing that it will impact society and our behaviors, and therefore how we design future technologies. And in the next episode, we're going to be discussing exactly what those design approaches are, and specifically value sense of design, as a means of moving the human story forward. So if you want to see how we can actually apply these design strategies to emerging technologies, then subscribe to IdeaMe.